so guys let us talk about the agenda of today's session we will be starting with the introduction to data science then we'll overview the boot camp okay what will be the uh, you know different skills we'll be talking about and we'll be learning throughout this particular boot camp then we'll be talking about the data science process in each and every data science what are the different steps to implement then we'll be talking about introduction to python python as we know it is a very important and very popular programming language and it's very important in data science okay because around you know 90% or i can say 95% data science professional those are using pro uh, programming language which is nothing but python okay many professionals are preferring this particular language okay like we have lot of different languages okay like we have r which is nothing but the alternative to python but we also you know check that particular programming language but we will starting with the python first okay then we'll be talking about jupyter notebook so as we know those who don't know about the jupyter notebook jupyter notebook is the ide for python from here jupyter notebook you can be able to access python and it's very beginner friendly language to those who don't know about anything okay this particular field they also able to understand okay how to create the code how to run the code okay by using jupyter notebook then we'll be talking about the all the basic data types in python and then we also explore some of the important libraries which are there for data science okay pandas and numpy library then let's go and explore one by one as we know guys what is data science okay so uh, guys if you're talking about data science so i can say data science is an interdisciplinary field that combines statistical analysis our machine learning algorithms as well as data visualization techniques for what for extracting insights and knowledge from the data right like we alternating to this we can simply say data science is nothing but the science of getting insights from the data isn't it like in data science basically there are a lot of things like data science basically involves like collecting the data uh, you know cleaning the data processing the data analyzing the large data sets to identify patterns and trends and you know relationships that can be used to make informed decisions and you know predictions again understand the data science like uh, data science able to draws uh, you know on a variety of disciplines including you know statistics mathematics computer science and other specific knowledge to you know solve complex problem and create value from the data so you know which in short we can simply use data science okay in each and every domain okay if you have a data of healthcare domain so you can use the that particular data of healthcare domain and you can analyze that data by using data science you can get it the you know insight from the data you can simply go and build the models like which can predict uh, the you know disease and which can reduce the you know mortality of humans right another thing is that you can build the dashboard as well right so this is just for the healthcare domain now you can use the data science in robotics domain you can use it in marketing you can use it in finance you can use it in e-commerce in each and every domain i can say you can use it uh, use it right and nowadays all companies all companies are using data science in their businesses okay to increase the growth as well as their sales new tools okay which are there for data science and you know for each and every day okay new techniques are you know created by the professionals and you know technology as well that is you know being developed to in improve data processing and you know 
analysis and visualization okay so let us dig deeper into this and understand the data science process okay like if we talking about so if we talking about data science process so there are a few steps in few steps you can implement data science okay on your data let's say you have the data you are working as a data scientist or data analyst or maybe machine learning engineer or maybe you know any you know analytics manager or anything else okay you have the data you wanted to you know implement data science on that as we know data science is nothing but a science of getting insights from the data so first thing is that if you have the data okay either client give you the problem statement or you have to create the problem statement right so first one is nothing but the problem formulation right like let's say okay i got a data from you know the let's say healthcare domain okay and you know client wants me to you know build a machine learning model okay which can predict whether a person having or a patient having a heart disease or not this is just an example okay if you have the data of uh, you know the employees of your company okay so you can make the prediction about attrition okay attrition rate like then if you have the finance data you can build many in indexes by using data science like means you can do multiple things by using data science okay in the initial stage okay we will have to identify the problem so first step is nothing but a problem statement then what about next next is going to be the data collection now if you got the problem then second thing is nothing but a data collection you will have to collect the data related to your problem right so how you can collect the data so there are multiple methods for collecting data like there are you can collect the data by using survey right you can collect the data by using you know data mining or you know data scrapping from the web right then you can collect the data by using data integration for from various different sources you can collect the data that is nothing but data integration okay you can collect the data by using you know like if it, let's say you created one app if you search for this okay in previous year i guess uh, not previous year in 2021 okay every person generated 1.7 mb of data okay each and every minute right yes many companies and nowadays you will see that the uh, like google itself is a you know very very big data is that you know if you want to collect some data you can use the google as well you can use wikipedia as well you can use you know uh, other sources as well to collect the data right so there are multiple sources to collect the data right yes databases as well so this is the second step which is nothing but a data collection first step is nothing but the problem formulation first thing you have to identify the problem like whether you have to okay what is your main problem like you have to build a model for classification you have to build a model for regression you have to build the you know uh, classify your data if you got the data okay so that is the thing now what about third step third step is going to be the data preparation right like you collected the data so that data is totally a raw data okay and if you directly go and use that particular raw data for your analysis so that makes no sense right because sec okay after data collection you should have to pre-process your data so that is nothing but data preparation so in the data preparation right you collected data preparation from survey 
from machine, from your app, from databases, from Wikipedia, from anything, from questionnaires. Okay, so you will find that there are a lot of mistakes are there. There are a lot of errors are there in your data, right? So for that, okay, you will have to pre-process the data. So what are the different data pre-processing methods, data preparation methods are there? So you will have to go with the first missing values, check the format, okay? Then check the duplicate values, okay? If there are duplicate value, then remove the uh, remove those, right? Okay, if there are missing values, so you can, okay? There are multiple methods either you can remove or either you can you know replace by the mean median mode depends on the format of the data right then you will have to check data is balanced or not right then you will have to find out the outliers many of you if you don't know about the outliers, so we'll be talking about the outliers in the upcoming session so then you will have to identify the outlier okay and there are you know uh, outlier detection methods are there like simple thing is that you just plot the box plot and you can detect the outlier outlier is simply the you know the extreme value i can say okay let's say you have the uh, like the normal age is nothing but the you know zero to let's say 80 or 100 okay if someone says that okay his age is 150 okay so that is the you know the outlier i would say okay that is not correct okay so those points you should you know taking into account you should have to you know understand these things then only you can able to prepare you know your data for the model building part again there are uh, like there will be you know some kind of uh, character some some kind of special symbols will be there so you should have to you know remove those symbols as well then then data exploration step is there okay what is data exploration now here the thing is that in the data exploration you will have to build the you know few plots you will have to create the few plots then you will have to you know transform your data okay to get ready for your further analysis you know to get ready your data for further analysis like as well as okay if you if you try to creating a let's say histogram okay so histogram itself okay tell you the lot of things okay it will tell you the you know the distribution of your variable isn't it it will tell you the whether the shape of your distribution it will tell you the you know the range of your variable right okay it will tell you the is there any outlier or not okay as well so from histogram as well from this one plot as well you can be able to you know get the lot of insights of your data okay that is also the main important step so that is nothing but a data exploration so modeling is nothing but the after you explore the lot of data okay then you finalize the data like you know for building the model right so after building you know if you are building a model so you will have to you know know which kind of model you will have to build either the model of classification or the regression depends on your problem formulation right then in the modeling step you will have to use the machine learning deep learning algorithms right and in the modeling itself you will find that okay a lot of models are there like if you wanna build a regression model so how many different algorithms are there for regression like a regression model itself uh, you know multiple linear regression model is there few non-linear regression model as well like polynomial regression quadratic regression models are there yeah yeah so these are for the classification if you're talking if you're talking about the classification model like the support vector machine is there logistic regression is there K nearest neighbor is there, naive base is there. What else? Decision tree is there, random forest is there, right? So, so many different models are there, and we can use those models to build them, our machine learning model, right? Then, what about next? After building the model, we have the further step, which is nothing but the evaluation. Okay, evaluation is very much important 
clustering is another topic guys clustering you can use the clustering in the you know grouping your data so you can use it in the data pre uh, you know data preparation or data pre processing step for grouping your data so what about evaluation so if we talking about the evaluation so for the you know after building the model so we will have to check the model whether our model giving the correct predictions or not right so that's what we want we can do by in the evaluation step right okay now in the evaluation step there are few evaluation matrices on that okay so you can use those matrices for identifying okay which type of you know for which uh, you know whether your model is strong for future prediction or not right okay then what about next after this here you will see that the deployment okay so you evaluated the model you you know you created the lot of model let's say you created the 10 models okay of your data set then you evaluated those model okay and out of those 10 models okay you got okay you got to know that one model which is giving me highest accuracy as well as the highest different evaluation matrices like f1 score precision recall okay if in terms of regression so you will find that the r square adjusted r square aic is bic is okay that guys i know for few okay these terms are totally new for those but okay we'll be talking about this we'll explain this all the terms in upcoming sessions so don't worry about this so this is the data science process and you know guys in each and every data science project you will have to go with this step okay step one is nothing but the problem formulation then data collection okay most of the time if you are working for the company you will get the data automatically from the client right so as well as you will have the problem statement with that okay like client give you the data and client saying that okay client wants to know the you know the prediction model for uh, their upcoming project or any kind of you know prediction model for you know classification or regression right so this first two step okay will already given to you okay if you are working for the company many times like if the company like who wanted to you know start his product so at that time you will have to you know form your own problem formulation then you will have to collect your own data set and then you you can go ahead with the further steps okay so uh, guys if uh, like if you're talking about python so as we all know this is a most common language for data science okay and many professionals are preferring this python language for you know handling data science projects okay and writing code of data science projects so simply we can say that python is a high level interpreted you know programming language that is widely used in uh, that is widely used in you know uh, data science we can say web development artificial intelligence and many other domains okay like it was first created by the guido you know guido van rossum okay in 1991 okay and he released in the same year okay and now this programming language is one of the most popular programming language in the world okay python i can say is uh, you know also known for its simplicity reliability and you know readability and easy of use yeah we'll be exploring the python code okay after some time then you will understand this thing okay it has a large and active community of developers who contribute to its development and create numerous libraries and frameworks that make it easier to 
work with okay and we also see it like that python is also you know an interpreted language as well as uh, it's a cross platform language which means that okay if you're talking about interpreted language so the meaning of this particular word is nothing but you know the code is executed line by line okay which makes it easy to use for beginners who want to learn programming right and it is also a you know cross platform language which is nothing but okay it can able to run on various operating systems like windows mac linux okay so we can say that you know python has a you know vast ecosystem of libraries including numpy pandas matplotlib and sklearn as well as lot of different libraries like tensorflow seaborn library is there beautiful soap is there skypy is there okay lot of libraries are there okay and all libraries are the open source okay like it's versatile you know versatility and easy of use make it a popular choice for you know building web applications you know as well as you know, automating task and scripting as well overall i can say python is very popular and flexible programming language that is widely used in various industries and domain okay and one of the domain is nothing but data science